This podcast focuses on concussions and when to return to play. Our faculty member is Dr. Mark Proctor from the Department of Neurosurgery. Let's start out just by defining what, what is a concussion. And uh, let's make no mistake, a concussion is definitely a brain injury. A concussion is essentially a physiologic process. And almost by definition, when a patient suffers a concussion, the imaging of that patient's brain should really be normal. Uh, this is because a concussion does not necessarily involve structural injury, at least based on our current technology. Therefore, when you have a concussion, what we're really talking about is a diffuse trauma to the brain that leads to the release of neurotransmitters, increases in calcium, potassium, decreases in blood flow, increased needs for sugar and oxygen in the brain. And essentially, the brain goes into a, a debt of oxygen and glucose where you've had a brain injury, your brain wants to get oxygen and glucose, but it's unable to get it. And that generally lasts for a period of three to seven days, although as many of you know, the symptoms of concussion can go on for much longer. With regard to what, what is the, uh, the patient experience, it's very important to note that concussion does not have to involve a loss of consciousness. Um, in fact, most concussions do not involve a loss of consciousness, and it's been shown in many studies now that a loss of consciousness does not necessarily mean a worse concussion. Why is our brain susceptible to concussions? It's a, in, in large part, it's based on the anatomy of the brain. The, the brain is positioned off-centered within the skull. And as you can see, the, the brain stem and spinal cord really come down in the back part of the skull. The weight of the skull is, uh, of the brain is really uh, favored towards the front of the skull. And when someone experiences any sort of rotational injury, a rapid acceleration, or more likely in sports or car accident, deceleration, it rapidly stops, the brain has the ability to move around within the skull. And concussion is right at the lower end of the spectrum of much more severe brain injuries. So at the low end, when it's more of a physiologic process, we call it a concussion, which includes things like subdural hematoma, when vessels along the surface of the brain are torn, and in the most severe form, when it's moving around so much that it's disrupted internally, that's called diffuse axonal injury. How does someone suffer a concussion? Uh, the most common mechanisms would involve uh, motor vehicle accidents, falls, and in this day and age, there's really an epidemic of concussion seen in the athletic arenas. How do you prevent a concussion? Well, the, the problem is that there's really no technology out there that can prevent a concussion. A concussion does not necessarily involve a blow to the brain. It, it's the brain shaking about with inside this, the skull. And therefore, the, the standards of helmets are, are not such that they can prevent concussions. They're, they're great at preventing more severe head, head injuries. They're great at preventing skull fractures. Uh, but they're not really going to prevent concussions. And it seems that the only real way we can prevent concussions are potentially rules changes, um, using the head a little bit less as a, as a weapon. Uh, and, and one problem with helmets is that they, they do give the athlete the freedom to use the head as a weapon. The minimum rating of a helmet for a uh, football player would be a 900. And to prevent a concussion, it would have to be a 300. And uh, obviously on that scale, the, the higher the number, the uh, less protection it offers. The problem with a rating of a 300 is that would be a far too unwieldy helmet to actually use on the field of play. Concussion really involves a team approach to making the diagnosis. I think one of the, the nice things about what's happening in recent years is that there's a much more, there's a much more greater awareness of concussions so that we're seeing uh, awareness of concussions by the athletes, by the families, by the coaches, by the trainers. And it's perhaps a little bit less of a badge of honor to have a concussion than it's been in the past, where having a bell ringer or getting a ding, those, those things in the past were considered to be um, a good sign in football. And now people are realizing that, no, that's, that's a brain injury, and probably we should avoid trying to have these, these brain injuries on any regular basis. Uh, we'll speak a little bit more about what are the effects of multiple concussions, but I think it's fair to say lots of athletes are having concussions. 
the effects of the concussions can be serious on the developing brain. And the goal should be towards prevention and especially getting an athlete back to play once they've had a concussion.